Okay, so this week's project is going to focus on rhythm. Okay, rhythm is the element or the principle that brings the sort of dynamics to the uh, composition. It brings the energy. And so we're going to focus on uh, a piece of music and make a composition based off of that piece of music, the energy and the rhythm that you find in the music. So when you're looking at a work of art, uh, and you're seeing how your eye moves from one position to another in the composition, you, the artist is creating a sense of energy and rhythm, and, the, and by bringing your focus to different elements in the design, like this figure here, you have the figure turning to the right, and the body's uh, kind of moving in a spiraling direction, and your eye moves from right to left down the figure and creates a, a very dynamic movement and so that is where you find rhythm, okay? So it almost looked like this figure is dancing and it comes to life because of that energy that the artist has created. Now there's about six different types of rhythm that I wanna focus on. Uh, the first one is random rhythm. When elements are repeated with no specific regular intervals, then alternating rhythms where you can repeat more than one element in a design. And in alternating designs, you use a one, two, one, two, one, two pattern. Think of black and white squares on the chessboard. That is an alternating rhythm in play. Okay, irregular rhythms are repetitive patterns that with little change, such as grid patterns. Repetitive involves the use of patterning to achieve timed movement and a visual beat. Flowing rhythms give a sense of movement that and is often more organic in nature and can have a curvilinear feel to it. Progressive rhythms show a sequence of forms through a progression of steps that move the viewer in a specific direction, such as you might find in a grid pattern in perspective. All right? Linear rhythm refers to the characteristic flow of the individual line. So every line within a composition should have a sense of rhythm embodied within it, and that's what really uh, kind of harmonize a work of art. So one of the things that draws your attention from one point to another in a composition is variation. So although you had repetition in the last project, uh, repetition with variation is what moves your eye through the composition. So just as the letters at the top of this page you know, show different letters of the alphabet, you're really drawn from one letter to the next and focus on them because there's a change in the font and that change in the characteristics of the fonts of the letters actually makes you notice them more and so you're actually drawn from one to the next instead of just, you know, gliding over all of them. Uh, the same thing happens in the shapes below. You have a square, and square with indentations on each side. It's those indentations that move you from, you know, the left side to the top, to the right side, uh, back to the top again. And so that's actually creating visual direction and movement. Without that, you know, again, the energy would be a consistent beat without any sort of variation in the beat. Now, here we have um, a repetitive grid, okay? And it's, a, it's basically showing you a grid pattern with the shape within the grid. So again, you're moving through the design at a particular pace, but on the left-hand upper side, you see there's a variation, a very dramatic variation in each one, and it's almost a, a random variation. So you have a kind of a combination of um, a random, um, random rhythm with a repetitive rhythm. All right, so you're, you're moving, but you're the, the artist has you moving in a more energetic way. Uh, and the one to the right of that, you're seeing a progressive rhythm with the repetitive rhythm because you're getting a certain you know, consistent amount of space and shape, so it's moving you, you know, at a certain rate, but then you're progressing towards a point in the center because the, the shapes gradually get larger as they move towards the center. So the, the artist is actually controlling where you're moving in this piece Whereas in the other one, it was much more of a random visual movement. So here we have another instance of um, regular rhythm where you're actually giving a consistent grid pattern. And then within that grid, there's some variation of the tone and colors. And so your eye is drawn from one to the next, but in a very consistent beat. Here's one with even less movement. Okay, so again, you have this is a, a minimalist work of art where you just have two rectangles up above, well, a white one above and a black one below, and then another rectangle within that. So, so again, this is a, a color field painting where it's the minimal amount of energy and dynamics. So if you were to think of a song that might actually um, relate to this particular piece, it would, it would have to be sort of a, 
uh, maybe a monk singing om because there really isn't much more uh, repetition and movement in the design than that and then you're just supposed to ponder the colors and stare at them okay so here we have a a sort of um what would this be alternating now this is probably a, a regular rhythm where you're seeing pieces that are placed at a consistent distance apart in a line so you have basically one two three four five lines created in the composition and the lines with the ovals in them you're seeing a consistent movement across and a consistent spacing but then you have a variation of each one that creates the dynamics in the piece so again without that variation this would be you know your eye would move you know kind of at the same pace across it but because this one has a heart within it and this one doesn't you're spending a little bit more time in here less time there a little more time in this shape so you have um, a, a regular rhythm but you also have a certain amount of uh, energy that's created by the change of pace that you have from one shape to the next. Once again, this is an alternating rhythm where you're going from black to white. And um, this one, again, there's a consistency. So it's, it's the pace is set up in a way that, that doesn't really um, create a lot of dynamic movement. There's just a shifting back and forth. And this kind of patterning is usually used for decoration uh, as opposed to a composition, which is really going to tell a story or, or have um, any more complex um, thought patterns in it. Again, another alternating one. Um, again, this kind of thing is really uh, the type of thing you might find in, in wallpaper or pattern designs where you're using an alternating you know, shapes that are uh, one flipping back and forth, uh, but there's repeated across the design. So there isn't a whole lot of variation in what happens. So again, your eye takes it in, understands it, and then um, you know, it doesn't spend a whole lot of time moving back and forth from the different shapes. Now this is a, a really good example of flowing rhythm. Okay, so in here you have a curvilinear feel of all the shapes within the design. Even you know within each line, there isn't any. Uh, even though this is a fairly diagonal movement of the shape, it all has a curvilinear linear movement. So you have curves, bigger gestures of curves throughout the design, and then within the, even the smaller shapes, there's curvilinear shapes and uh, cur you know a flowing movement that's continued. Uh, throughout all the different shapes and forms within the composition. Now this one I put in because it not only has curvilinear shapes uh, in the contours of the form, but the actual movement three-dimensionally is curvilinear as well. Because uh, in this one you have George O'Keefe who's taking space and curving it through a soft transition of gradation from dark to light. All right? So these could have had harder, more abrupt tra transitions but she's softened them and created a, again, a, a three-dimensional curvilinear feel around the form as well as in the uh, contours of the shape. Now this one I was a little perplexed by because it, it really has kind of a, a random feel on a lot of the movement, although the general stronger gestures, the bigger gestures are all very curvilinear. It's almost like a roller coaster. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of energy in this and a lot of dynamic movement so, you know, as far as the way it might have feel musically, you know, as far as a, a rhythm, it would be a piece that would have a lot of dynamic uh, change of uh, notes and uh, the rhythm would be really energetic. So, but it has a flowing feel to it. So, you know, again, you'd have to think of, you know, m music that isn't real jarring, but it has a, you know, a lot of energy. This one I put in because, once again, it's, it's kind of like the George O'Keefe. Um, it has a curvilinear feel to most of the shapes. They're soft edges, round, slightly rounded edges. But the actual gradation in this, you know, from dark to light is very soft and smooth. It's almost imperceptible from the dark here to the lighter tones out here. So that soft gradation sort of rounds space and creates that sort of soft round, um, rounding feel three-dimensionally uh, as well as the two-dimensional um, contours of the forms. So that's something to think about. You know, right now we're working with black and white, so it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, but when we start working with tone again, to think about how you're actually creating soft turns of form will create a uh, smoother feel within the composition. So let me see. I think this was random rhythm again. And then this one, because of the fact that you have 
the same shape that's repeated over and over. You know, again, if this was in a grid pattern, it would be a regular rhythm and it would have a consistent beat. But because this, the artist has taken the shape and then twist and turn it, every one is at a different um, direction. Your eye moves and it's wondering, you know, the shape, shape seems different and the placement and the orientation to the other forms is different with each shape. And then also the patterning in the background is doing the same thing. So your eye moves in a fairly random direction throughout this composition. But it is being controlled because, again, if this these shapes were actually just straight and uh, placed in the same way, you would just be moving in a linear pattern you know, across the design. But now you're actually kind of flowing through the design. So it's, it's uh, somewhere between random and, and flowing in the rhythm. Here, again, you have a lot of craziness happening, okay? And as much as, you know, this is a random rhythm, so a lot of these, you know, these rhythms can have a connection, you know, between more than one idea of rhythm, you know, one or more principle. This one, you have a lot of really crazy movement that's uh, swirling through all these different curvilinear lines, but then there's an overall pattern that actually organizes those in a circular movement here and, and here. So you can see this underlying circular arrangement that, does control in a kind of radiating pattern out from the center uh, the energy of this composition. So it's really, really dynamic and energetic, but in the end, it also has a certain amount of control to it. So when I think about music that might relate to random rhythm, I think of jazz music, okay, because it's kind of um, spur of the moment. The artist creates what they feel as they're actually making the music. And so I thought this particular piece outside of the fact that it looks like they're jazz musicians. Um, I think the way that the shapes were created in sort of a you know, cut and paste fashion and uh, has a real sense of spontaneity to it, that this reflects you know, what you might uh, find in a composition created with um, a random rhythm. Here's another one, and I thought this was interesting because again, even with things that are random, uh, you can create a sense of control. And with this, you're actually seeing whole lot of crazy colors and shapes in the background it becomes really really visually confusing until you see the white shape of the uh, grocery cart and some of the forms placed within it in contrast to that so these white lines uh, and that are in the foreground separating the space in the background um, then become sort of a controlling element and so with as much dynamics and energy as there is there's still that element of bringing it in and giving it some um, organization because you're going from color to white, you know, color to white, color to white, you know, breaking the pattern up. And so there is, you know, some somewhat of control energy at the same time. So whatever kind of, uh, you know, rhythm that you're using, you also want to have a sense of, you know, organizing the composition and, and bring it into some sort of uh, visually understandable form. And so I think with this, I think this is a really uh, good, you know, uh, demonstration of how that can be done by using one element to you know organize and kind of you know um, frame the other elements in the composition another one again this one I feel like uh, is doing the same kind of thing where they're creating these sort of random patterns everything's kind of uh, organic and, and shape and form so the the lines the irregular lines that are created by the, the shapes have the same kind of feel as the irregular placement of the forms within the composition. But the, the thing that keeps the thing from just co going completely crazy and falling apart are these contrasting areas, the contrasting areas of pink and black and yellow and blue. You know, so these stronger um, background shapes help to give a sense of organization to a composition that seems kind of almost random and crazy and out of control. But uh, in the end, you know, you have to find a way of presenting things in a way that you know has energy and it actually has a sense of um, composition and organization. So when I, when I talk about progressive rhythm, you know, progressive rhythm is one that moves you in a in a precise direction. Okay, so uh, with this using a perspective, a perspective grid of these you know, haystacks, so they're all positioned in what would be a grid pattern where they have the placement on the on the pattern that's consistent across, you know, horizontally and vertically, and then it compresses as it moves into the distance. So visually, it's moving you towards a point in the distance, which would be somewhere back in here near the horizon line. And then even these linear movements here are all done in perspective and move you towards the same point. 
So almost everything in this composition is moving you towards the center point uh, in the composition in, in the background. So by using progressive rhythm, you can actually you know, direct the viewer to a particular place in a composition. There's a way an artist did it in kind of a funny way, and that is they, uh, this is one of the Beatles album covers, and they use this idea of progressive rhythm to move you, you zig you down this way, then move back that way, then come down this way, then move back that way, because the direction of the movement you know, changes and flip-flops, and so instead of following normal perspective, they keep flip-flopping it and moving you kind of in a zigzag pattern across the design. So as much as this could be kind of a, a almost unmoving kind of pattern, it has a whole lot of visual movement because of that, you know, the compression and the uh, progressive rhythm. Here's another example of that, and this is in a um, sort of a fan pattern where you're using a um, radiating uh, movement from left to right, where you're kind of fanning from angling to the left, my left at least, and then towards center and then off to the right. Uh, and then focusing on a point somewhere out here in the distance. So you also have a balance between this large kind of uh, salmon kind of color or tan color out here with this off-white color over here. Uh, and then the, the more dominant shapes in the center. So there's this you know, kind of balancing out of empty space and positive space and a, a focusing of the energy you know, towards the center in the composition using a progressive rhythm. So here I want to just focus on line and um, the use of line within a composition and how it can be consistently done in a way that creates the same sense of energy with the line as it does with the overall composition. So in this composition, there's um, a number of linear movements that are all, they're angular. Okay, so almost everything in here other than the square boxes that frame the composition has an angular movement. You have an angular movement of the railway train, um, the angular movement of all these lines within the composition. But then if you were to zoom in on this, all the shapes were drawn with an angularity to it. So there isn't any curvilinear forms, even all the, the body positions. You have the angle of the arms, uh, the angle of the legs, the angular movement of this body. So almost everything has that you know, dynamic um, angular quality to it. So let's see. The, uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is with this composition is how the lines move you through the design. Okay, so you have this line from the uh, guns here, you know, moving you down towards this direction, then the guns being seen again here, pointing you down here, and then, oops, I just moved that, and then you have uh, those guns again, you know, the, the lines carrying on through the, the characters down here to these guns at the bottom, and these bullet holes pulling you over to the right to the character at the end. So what happens here is this guy throws up his guns, and he grabs onto this bar, and he kicks this guy out the window, then he grabs the guns again, shoots the guy, and in the end, sits there and goes, brr, I've won the battle. Um, so, but the energy that's created with all this angularity is one of, of a heightened sense of dynamics. And so if this were, you know, you think about energy, this would have to be like some sort of heavy metal or some sort of really high energy uh, rhythm within this composition. In contrast to that, here we have uh, Thomas Hart Benton with a uh, design that's almost completely curvilinear lines. So all the lines have a rounded feel, even if you were to look at the vegetables, the bug, uh, the bark on the trees, uh, the sickles, the hats, the clouds, everything has a curvilinear feel to it. Not only on the contours, on the linear movement of the forms, but also around the form has a soft turn of form with that soft gradation within all the shapes within the composition. It's almost an overkill of um, curvilinear flowing quality within the composition. So, so again, I think what he wanted you to have was a really peaceful feeling uh, before I sit there and stare at this and fall asleep. Okay, now this one I thought was interesting because it is really um, contrasting curvilinear and um, kind of angular movement you know, with the, uh, the broader shapes of the white forms of the, for the space that the characters are standing on, um, the ground. That all has a curvilinear feel to it. Uh, and you know, that you might think that's sort of a safe feeling, but it has an eerie quality, you know, placed against this black background that has all these kind of angular progressive movement of the trees, you know, kind of moving upward, holding on to that space. So, and again, you get that feeling that the, uh, because of this progressive movement within the shapes, because with, with um, things that grow, you have this branching out 
and the branching out in itself is a progression of the form and that seems to be holding up these spaces that the all these characters are on and then the characters themselves seem to be some sort of warring uh, creatures that are imprisoning and attacking and killing one another so there's a real darkness to this so again it's, it's kind of an interesting uh, sense of rhythm that's being carried on here and sort of somewhere between um, random and um, um, I guess progressive rhythms that are happening so you, you might think of music that has you know a sense of movement and crescendoing uh, as it as it occurs here um, there's a Miro that has a very strong curvilinear feel to it so there's a lot of uh, shapes that are flat and two-dimensional but all the, the shapes have a curvilinear linear movement to it and outlining and then the space in the background also has a soft flow kind of curvilinear flow because there's a soft gradation from dark to light and then we have a Matisse again that um, this one as much as it seems controlled and you might think of it as kind of a regular rhythm because you're going from you know rectangle to rectangle each one is is very irregular so this has more of a random feel to it and it's really seen in the way that the shapes are created and it um, has an irregular quality to it Psst. Okay, so I'm doing a demonstration, guys, right now that I'm recording. And uh, so this is uh, one of the student examples of this project. All right, so in the student example, um, you're seeing some curvilinear forms. This would be what I would call a flowing rhythm. This is based on a piece of blues music. And so the lines have a curvilinear quality to it. And um, guys... This piece was based on, I think it was um, oh, this kind of rave kind of quality music. And um, so again, it has a high energy, a lot of angular movement, a lot of irregular movement to it. And so, you know, the very dynamic piece. And with this, with these pieces, they're gonna be done on a nine by 12 Bristol board, black and white, again, no, no shading. And you have to do it in Sharpie marker. Here's another example, again, this one, you know, could almost feel calm if it wasn't for the, you know, really uh, small broken up forms that are kind of moving in an upward direction, you know, very powerfully from, you know, left to right, right to left uh, behind the figure. And the sort of dynamic um, quality of the shifts from light to dark within the composition. So, so again, this one is somewhere between, you know, high energy and, um, you know, kind of... Uh, ominous feel to the sound right so so again you may decide to do uh, something that reflects a lot of the the music you know the overall feel of the music or maybe one particular area of the the song that's what you're seeing in this particular piece and this was based on a piece of classical music where you have um, building up from you know the right to the left side of this piece where at the beginning you know you have birds that are just kind of sitting along the tree branch and don't have a lot of movement, and then all of a sudden they're busting out, taking off, and flying away. Well, that reflected uh, an area of the, the music where it crescendoed and, and kind of burst out in sound. So, you know, depending on what part of the music you're focusing on, you may uh, create a different type of energy for your design. Okay, so that, that was the last piece. All right, so, so again, with this piece, you're gonna have about two weeks to do this. Um, you're gonna have to do preliminary studies, uh, and you have to base it on a piece of music that we're going to decide upon. We're going to have 10 different songs to choose from. And you'll have to choose one of those songs. You're going to have to listen to it, get a sense of what the, the rhythm and the beat is within the, the piece of music, and then try to recreate that with your composition. All right? So catch you guys later. Have a good day. Uh, and contact me if you have any questions about what you're doing. You, you may have.